everyone, Lynn here from Mockingbird in Maine. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a, I think it's going to be part one of three parts tutorial on how to make these little faux leather mini journals. And this is also a design team project for the old design shop. And I will link Julie's Etsy shop down in the uh, description. I am using for this project her coffee dyed botanical ATC size printable cards. And these are, I'm going to give you a couple of options. These are uh, printed on cardstock, and that is this little journal. And then I am using them printed on fabric. Um, I've already sewn them all to my covers. So this is another set of her ATC cards that I love. Vintage Encyclopedia Clips ATC size cards printed on fabric, so you can see that. So today's video, I'm going to show you how to print on fabric and how to create the faux leather. And then um, just get your pages prepped. And then in the second video, um, which hopefully will be within the next couple of days I will show you how to bind them in with the three hole pamphlet stitch and this is a nice stash buster scrap buster project I've gone into my scrap box and gathered up tea dyed papers and book pages and music paper and cardstock and created little three signature um, mini journals now I am doing all nine all that I printed from the ATC sheet and um, I'm going to, on the third part three, going to show you what I'm creating with all nine of the journals. And so the first thing is the printing on fabric. And, and it's super quick and easy um, processed. And again, you don't have to. You can easily use it printed on paper. Okay, so for the printing on fabric, I'm using the freezer paper method. So um, just any brand freezer paper that you can find um, in the grocery store or like Walmart or even Amazon. So you need that and whatever fabric you're going to use. I am using a white cotton sheet that I got at a thrift store. And you cut your piece of freezer paper just a little bit bigger than 8.5 by 11 and the fabric as well. I want your iron on the linen cotton setting, the highest setting, and you're going to put your freezer paper shiny side down onto your fabric. This way. And just iron it on. It's just a few seconds till it's adhered. And that is that. Um, now I've seen people just want to make sure you want to make sure it's really flat. You don't want any wrinkles. And I've seen people use a lint roller to get off all the little bits of um, fabric because you do want it to be as clean as possible putting it through your printer. Um, I'm just going to trim it down to eight and a half by eleven. Um, I know I've seen other tutorials and I know people have had um, trouble with it getting stuck and jamming up the printer. Luckily I have never had that problem, but you want to get as clean lines when you trim it down and you want it to be 8.5 by 11 so it, it does not get stuck. Um, and so once it's trimmed down, you will um, load it into your printer as if it's a piece of paper. So how, whoops, however your printer loads, um, that is how you will do that. And this is for, oh, I didn't mention, but it's for inkjet printing. So make sure your edges are nice and clean. And when you do um, do your settings for the printer, I do photo paper, best quality settings, because you want to get, um, I think I need to sharpen my scissors, you want to get the uh, most ink down on the fabric as you can. 
So I will print it and I will I just want clean edges. I will be back. Okay, I printed um, another page um, from the old design shop. This is from the Vintage Ephemera Botanical, page seven, um, because I'm gonna use these in another project. Um, so you just peel it off. I usually let it sit for a few minutes just to let all the ink dry. Um, and then just peel it off from the back of the um, freezer paper. And there you have it. Now these are not color fast. There are setting um, treatments you can do to set the color. Um, I'm not doing that because I don't intend to get these wet. So if you were using them, if you were gluing them down, you would have to either set them, color set them, or um, turn them into like a book cloth, which I can do another video of that if you'd like. Let me know down below if you're um, interested in how to um, turn these into a book cloth that you can glue down. Anyway, so that's that. Next step is creating the faux leather. And for that, I have used um, the heavyweight, I think it's 65 pound, craft paper cardstock, um, and six inches long by three and three quarter inches high. I have cut it, and you will need glycerin, which is uh, found in any um, drugstore or um, any department store that has a health and beauty section, and this is just like a vegetable-based oil. Moist, it's in moisturizers. They use it to preserve dried flowers and things like that. So it is um, harmless. And for the winter here in New England, it's very rough on my hands. This is actually a nice little craft project and spa treatment at the same time. You will also need a little travel-sized bottle. I think this is two ounces. Oh, this was... um. I want to say it was like three dollars and eighty-eight cents. It was a little less than four dollars for six ounces, and it goes a long way. You only need about a sixth of this little bottle, glycerin to water ratio, and shake it up. And you're just going to um, start spraying. Actually, I'm gonna six inches by three and three quarter inches. I'm just gonna erase that so I don't have that on my. Okay. Oh, and these little craft mats, another little bargain, is um, they're two for a dollar at the dollar store. They're like kitchen mats or cutting mats or something, and I just tape them together. And they're very easy to keep clean. Clean up your paint and glues, and I use those to craft on. So what you are going to do is just shake up your mixture and spray it on liberally. I do both sides and then you want to just rub it in kind of gently you don't want to um, tear the paper and what the glycerin water mixture does is open up the paper fibers so the paper will become stuck <laughs> pliable um, so I usually do a few times and then when it feels, you, you'll get a, a feel for it, but nice and probably just crinkle it up, scrunch it up, and then carefully unfold it and spray again. And you just wanna keep doing this until you kind of get the look or the wrinkles, the amount of wrinkles you want. Um, crinkle it up and then flatten it out and it does actually become pretty strong once it's dried and sealed um, but just while you're working with it wet just be careful because it could tear after that step and once it is dry you will have something that looks like this this is a little bit bigger but just for um, demonstration purposes so here you have your dried um, glycerin treated paper and I grab my distress inks in, in assorted shades of brown and 
so we have a kitten. Well, she's almost a year old now, but she's a thief. And so she stole my blending tool. Hold on. Okay, and you need your blending tool. And I keep the glycerin mixture um, close by because sometimes I want to spread the ink a little bit more. But all I do is I take, I start with the vintage photo usually, and then I just go over and it pulls up all the wrinkles. And this is just, you know, what look you're going for. You just want to add as much ink or as a little ink, it's shedding a little bit, the ink pad, but, and then I just, I'll blend in a little bit. All those little pieces are from the pad. And then we've got walnut stain, and I'll go over, not as much as the vintage photo, but a little bit here and there at the edges. And then do a quick little blending. And then um, ground espresso. I do even less with this, unless I want a really dark look to it. Okay. And you could have stopped with the vintage photo if you just wanted a light. So there it is. Now I'm going to spritz it a little bit because I want the inks to just spread a little bit more. And so you just start with the lightest, work your way up, whoops, <laughs> keep adding ink until you get the look that you want. And then let that dry. So now I've got a few done that I will show you um, because again, I'm doing nine mini journals. Um, what I've also done, and this is an option as well, because I'm doing three small signatures in the mini journals, I did score um, to have a spine, but you could easily just fold and like that and have you know one signature without a spine, but I want a spine. Um, so three is the middle, a quarter inch over from that, and a quarter inch on the other side, and you've scored your little um, spine. Now, um, I've done it a couple of different ways, but if you wanted the lines of the spine to be a little more pronounced, I just go over it with the Distress Ink and it pulls up the lines a little bit. But that is entirely up to you. Once I clean up here. Once they, you've distressed ink them and let them dry, sometimes I dry them with my heat gun, sometimes I just let them sit overnight, and you get all different variations on all of those. And they've already, they're already, once they're dry, feeling a little um, stronger. I seal it with a matte sealer, and you could use the Artist Matte Medium. Um, you could use a matte Mod Podge. My go-to is Collage Podge Matte. I get this at Hobby Lobby. And you could also do gloss. I'm choosing matte. That's just the look that I'm going for. But if you want it to be shiny, by all means, you can use a gloss sealer. I just do a thin coat of the sealer. on both sides. So that's it. Seal them, let them dry, and then um, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I have sealed my covers, and you might be able to tell, maybe you won't be able to see it on camera, there is a, a little sheen to it, 
even though it's matte, it's still a little, little bit shiny. So I'm going to cut out one of my images. If I had cut it out of the paper, I would have I would distress the edges with the distress ink, but I'm just gonna leave it as is. I just take my glue stick and just put a little bit of down. I just want to um, hold it down while I sew it on, and just center it, tap it down a little bit. And I don't mind if there's messy edges because of these are um, really grungy books that you would find, you know, in the forest in a cottage. So that is the look I'm going for. I'm going to take it to my sewing machine, just sew around the edge with a zigzag stitch and I will be back. Okay, so I've sewed it on. I'm just going to trim up my threads. When I prepped it, actually I'll do another one right here. Um, I did take my glue stick just to tack it down just a little bit so it doesn't move when I'm sewing but that does not go bleed through because it is not a liquid glue it is solid and that just I mean a minimal amount just to hold it down so I can sew the zigzag stitch around I have gone ahead and cut out the rest of my fabric images and sewn them onto my covers and the last thing that you would need to do because we are sewing through the spine is add a little piece of cardstock to the inside of the spine. I've, I've glued that in and it's a half inch wide by about three and five eighths inches long. Just a little bit shorter than your cover. So you will need to do that. Then after that you want to start gathering up your pages. And I have already started. Here's my box of little pages. And the pages are five and a half inches wide by three and a half inches tall. And if you want pockets or flip outs or pockets from uh, on the bottom just of course cut your pages a little bit bigger um, to accommodate that but I am just doing very simple pages unembellished um, for these journals also if you are planning on doing end papers you could get those ready and I use cardstock for the end papers not a thin scrapbook paper um, and these are two and a half inches wide by three and a half inches high. Um, so that is it. Gather up your stuff. And uh, part two, we will bind them in. And then part three is still kind of a surprise what I'm going to do with them. Um, but I am excited about it. And oh, also I wanted to mention if you are printing them onto paper if you're using that instead of the fabric you do not have to even sew them onto the covers if you don't have a sewing machine or you don't like to sew you can simply glue them on and that would be perfectly fine as well and also if you don't want end papers um, I mean the inside is beautiful you don't have to have end papers I'm just choosing to do that um, and you could also even add pockets to your end papers, which I will show you how to do that as well. Um, so thank you so much guys for watching. This is actually my very first tutorial video. So please, any questions, um, let me know down below in the comments. And I hope you like it and I hope you'll stick with me for the next two videos for this um, design team tutorial project. And I also have uh, a giveaway going on my YouTube channel and I'll put the link down below for that video. And that it goes until tomorrow, Saturday, February 9th at noon Eastern time. So please subscribe if you like the videos and give me a thumbs up. And I will see you guys back here again real soon for part two. Thank you so much for watching everybody.